You don't need to talk to your dog. You don't need to use words when communicating. What if silence is the answer? What if silence is the way to understand our dogs better? As I was learning to understand dogs better and to communicate better with my dogs, I often realized that my voice was in the way of me truly understanding my dogs. I was also listening to a podcast made by a dog behaviorist here in Sweden during this time, and she was talking about how she did a 30-day challenge not speaking to her dogs with words, just using body language and energy. So I thought I would do the same, and I started off with seven days. No speaking, just body language. The first couple of days I used, I, I forgot sometimes that I was doing this challenge, so I spoke. But overall, the silence really helped me to understand my dogs better. Talking to dogs is actually a way of us humanizing them. We talk to humans. Animals don't understand words unless we teach them. They understand energy and they understand body language. So it actually doesn't really make sense for us to speak with words to animals. We love them, so we want to talk to them. That's usually the main thing. And sometimes we convince our ourselves that if, you, if, I don't, if we don't talk to our animals, they will feel unloved. At least that was me. Once I realized that I can show my dog love in an even better way than by talking to them, things got so much better. When we talk to dogs, the result of us humanizing them, sometimes intentionally, but most of the times unintentionally, the result usually is some sort of problem with the dog because there's a miscommunication happening when we treat our dogs as th something they are not, aka humans. By not talking to our dogs, or at least talking way less to our dogs, we can find better ways to communicate with them and we can learn to understand their language and what they need from us in a much better and healthier way. To use non-verbal communication with our dogs will help us to understand them on a whole new level. Dogs, unlike humans, dogs use their nose before anything else. After their nose, they use their eyes and after their eyes, they use their ears. That's why sometimes you can have the most well-behaved and well-trained dog and you take your dog for a long walk, maybe in the forest. You let your dog off leash, knowing if you call its name, it will come to you because that's a, a command you have taught your dog. But then a squirrel runs across the road and your dog picks up on that scent, on that scent, on the squirrel's scent, and it's off. You can scream your dog's name as many times as you will like, as you'd like, but the dog will not listen to you because the smell and the scent is so much stronger than the command that it will he that that it hears, that it can that it listens to. I have a dog named Alfie who's from who's originally from a shelter in Serbia. The five first years of his life. He was living as a wild dog, mostly. He didn't have much human contact at the shelter. And grow so coming to Sweden, he knew no commands, no nothing. And he was afraid, kind of, of humans. He was really shy. So when I started to communicate with him, he taught me so, so much about nonverbal communication. With my other dogs that I brought home, they had previous owners and they oftentimes knew some commands. They might might have had problems that I had to deal with, but th maybe they barked on the walk and and chased cars or, or they were pulling on the leash, but they could sit <laughs> and they could give me a paw. They knew the commands, but they didn't know other things that were oftentimes more important to know. Alfie, my dog that came from Serbia, he came and he was like a, a, a white canvas. He knew nothing, no commands, nothing. But he knew his body language. He knew, he knew the language of dogs. So I had to listen to him in order to understand him and in order to communicate with him and, and build a team with him. When I let him loose in the forest, he didn't know commands. From the beginning, I knew I didn't want to 
ruin him, so to speak, by training him, using uh, my voice as and giving him commands to sit and come and stuff. I really wanted us to build a relationship based on complete, just on, on completely on energy and leadership and body language. So when I let him loose in the forest, I couldn't call him with my voice. I tried, you know, just for fun and just because, yeah, I didn't know what he would do. I called him, Alfie, Alfie. He didn't listen one single bit. But when I stopped, we had built this connection. So when I stopped walking, he stopped. And when I turned around a little bit and sat down, he would come. So I learned how I could teach him through body language. And to this day, Alfie is the most trusted dog I have on the walk. If people come, he knows he should come back to me. One time I met like ahead, somebody was coming with another dog. That dog did not respond well with meeting other dogs. So when they saw that Alfie was off leash, they told me to, oh, could you please call your dog so he can come? Uh, so, so, yeah, because because they felt insecure with a dog off leash. Maybe that dog <laughs> would interact with their dog that was really unbalanced and in a ba bad state of mind. So I used body language and afterwards they told me they were impressed <laughs> because they thought I would have to call him by name and maybe he would come because usually, you know, dogs, they kind of do their own thing if they're not really well trained. Or in this case, they tr they really respect their owner, like Alpha did. I often feel like I don't even deserve him because he's so loyal and he's just such a good balanced dog. So you don't need commands in order to communicate with your dog. You need body language and this like invisible leash in a way, this invisible connection that you have with your dog. So your dog knows, okay, I think I need to come back now. Another thing to mention is that Alfie doesn't really have the um, he doesn't really want to hunt, so that helps a lot <laughs> because some t mo very many dogs they have this hunting instinct, and let me tell you that's that's a different story. Then you maybe should consider not having your dog off leash unless it's supposed to go out and hunt because it's very hard to to break that once the dog has picked up on a scent. It's off running and it's very hard to break that. Uh, yeah, I've had dogs as well that I, I had off leash and they picked up on a scent and they were gone, maybe one, two hours. <laughs> and then they came back because we still had this connection. But at the moment, their, the, the scent of the an other animal was much stronger than, <laughs> than the, them wanting to be with me. So if that's the case, you know, you have to really evaluate okay is it safe for me to let my dog off leash or maybe it's maybe the safe option for me right now is to leave my dog on the leash i have a challenge to you as a dog owner what if you took seven days right now starting right now after this video seven days no talking with your dog that's the challenge instead of talking listen Instead of talking, use your body language. Ask yourself these questions. How can I use my energy and my body language to communicate with my dog? And play around a bit. How can I make my dog sit and stay without using body language? Maybe you have been training your dog, so it's uh, easy. But if you have not, try it. It's not as hard as it might seem in the beginning. And what about a dog walk? Can I go a whole dog walk without speaking to my dog, using words. Really evaluate yourself, your energy, and how you, re how you act around your dog. Use this time in silence to focus on your behavior and the dog's behavior and how you can interact with each other on a deeper level. And after those seven days, I would be so, so happy if you guys wrote your results in the comment section down below so I could, yeah, just see how it went. That would be really, really interesting. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.